Hello, everyone. If you like what I'm doing here, please consider subscribing, liking, and commenting. It would really help the channel out quite a bit. Thank you very much. Marshall. I would like to ask a question to which I tell you in advance. I expect no answer. What is genius and where did it come from? Genius is very rare. That much we do know. It is elusive and not immediately recognizable. It cannot be purchased nor can it be cultivated. So, rare, intangible, and not to be acquired by any means then, when is it, and what is its source? Aware that I have asked the unanswerable, I present you now with the words of the Roman writer Plutarch, half a century before Christ. Genius is a deity. Where is my angel, Doctor? Your what? My angel. I'm lost without my angel. I don't think I quite understand. I thought I saw her sitting on my typewriter. But when I sat down to work, Doctor, she wasn't there at all. Our mystery drama, Fallen Angel, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Elspeth Eric and stars Ralph Bell. Something Our story concerns a writer. His name is Lawrence Maitland. Many think he's a genius. He thinks so himself. But genius or no, at the moment Lawrence Maitland is in serious trouble. What went wrong? Something went wrong. What? What am I doing here? What kind of a place is this? How did I get here? I can't remember a thing. Oh, good Lord. What's happened to my memory? I can't live if anything's happened to my memory. Yes, come in, please. Uh, Dr. Kramer? Yes? I'm Jack Brody. Oh, yes, Mr. Brody, come in. Uh, you wanted to talk to me about Mr. Maitland. Yeah. Well, it all, it all started my place, you know. And Mr. Maitland ain't just a customer. He's like like a friend, too. Mm-hmm. Did he come to your place often, Mr. Oh, Brody? yeah, yeah, all the time. He never went no place else. But when, when I say all the time, I mean when he was drinking, you know. But he wasn't always drinking. But there was months at a time he didn't drink at all. Mm. A periodic drinker. Yeah, yeah, well, he, he went on benders, you know, two, three, maybe four times a year. And always at your place. Yeah, right. Well, why was that, do you suppose? Well, I don't know. He wouldn't be recognized there. Not very likely. It's, it's near the waterfront, you know. We don't get people from Mr. Maitland's kind of background as a rule. Mm -hmm. Well, him and I got to be what you might call friends. I mean, I mean, he, he knew I'd look after him. How? Well, when he'd get himself really boozed up, I'd call his taxi for him. <laughs> his taxi? Yeah, yeah, it's the same one every time. The driver is a guy named Ivan Kaplan. He was, he was like a friend of Maitland's, too. I think we'd take him home and get him to bed. And lots of times I'll even wake a Mrs. Maitland up. He, he just knew what to do. Yes, yes, Mrs. Maitland told me. Would you care to tell me just what happened that night? Oh, uh, morning. It was in the morning. About 11 o'clock, that's when I opened up. And, well, the place was empty when he come in. I hadn't seen him in some time, but I wasn't exactly surprised. I knew sooner or later he'd show up. Hi, Jack. Hey, Mr. Maitland. I thought you'd never open up. Well, never before 11, you know that. Well, 
What's your pleasure? You know damn well what I drink. Make it a double. Right. Water with it? Beer on the side. <laughs> well, your liver. <laughs> What's that? Who came in? Customer. <laughs> yes, sir? Beer. Drink? Uh, please. Hey, Jack. I need another drink here. Yes, sir. Be right with you, Mr. Mitchell. Now. Right now. You want the same? The same exactly. No, wait. I still have some beer left. Double? I said the same, didn't I? Who's that man? Enter the bar with a beer. Him? I think his name is Jones. You know him? Well, just over the bar. He keeps staring at me. Hmm? Well, maybe he knows you from someplace. Impossible. I never do anybody like well, that. Well, maybe he's seen your picture in the paper. I've seen it a few times. Hey, maybe he caught you on the TV, huh? She publicity. My publisher thinks it's important. Well, it sells books, probably. My books sell themselves. Yeah, well... <laughs> Jones. Is that his real name? Yeah, that's what he told me. I think he said Jones. Don't you know? Look, it's none of my business. He says his name is Jones. As far as I'm concerned, his name is Jones. Well, tell you, Jones, to stop staring at me. I don't think he's staring at you, Mr. Maven. Look, what if he is? It don't mean nothing. That's what you think. He's getting up. Occasional beers, all he drinks. He's coming over here. Now, Mr. Maven, come on. He thinks he's going to start anything. He wouldn't do that. How do you know? You don't even know him. Uh, Excuse me. Uh, Mr. Jones. Get him away from me. I was wondering if you'd care to uh, have a drink. No, Mr. Jones, come on. You dirty little punk. I just want to tell me. I know what you want. I know all about you. Please, please. Disgusting. Let go of me. Mr. Maven, come on. Come on, break it up. I want to tell you. Please. You don't deserve to live. What's that? Are you crazy? What'd you do that for? I had to hit him. He's a maniac. Well, he didn't hurt you, did he? I'm calling the police. Guys like that, I, I, I know their type. I'm getting the police. You keep him right here. He ain't going no place. He's passed out cold. Well, uh, uh, Jones' character was back in a flash with a cop. Mr. Maitland was okay by then. Well, you know, pretty okay. Mm-hmm. He'd taken a cockeyed swipe at Jones and... Jones swings back, and he fell and hit his head. He, he he talked plain enough, but he repeated himself a lot. Kept asking what happened? Yeah, yeah, just like in the movies. And and where's my angel? Angel? Yeah. I, that's why I thought he met his wife, so I went and phoned her. And meanwhile, they booked him at the station house for disorderly conduct, and Jones said he was going to sue for assault and battery. So Mrs. Maitland showed up. I thought she'd take him home, but she didn't. So she brought him to to this place. Mm-hmm. Well, I think she did the right thing. Yeah, well, why not a hospital? He doesn't really need a hospital at this point. He's better off here. I can't get over the yellow sheets. Buttercup yellow. And with the sun shining on them... Very cheery. Very. It's hard to be depressed on yellow sheets. Is that the idea? Am I in some kind of asylum? A mental institution? Oh, Lord. That'll make some kind of a headline. Lawrence Maitland, America's foremost novelist, confined to a mental institution. But how? Why? Who did it to me? Who put me here? Pauline? Oh, why would Pauline do that? She's got no reason. No reason. Except to get rid of me. Oh, yes, there's always that. That would be the reason. That... Yes. Who is it? Good morning, Mr. Maitland. Who are you? I'm Dr. Kramer. Max Kramer. How are you feeling? I feel fine. What is this place? Some kind of a nut house? Who put me here? It's a sanitarium. Your wife brought you here after a minor fracas in a bar room and a brief appearance in front of a judge. I've been in jail? Only very briefly. For what? 
Oh, creating a disturbance and assaulting a man who threatens to sue you. What man? I only know his name is Jones. How do you know that much? The bartender told me. Jack Brody, you talk to Jack? He seems to know you quite well. I do all my drinking at Jack's. Why? There are more attractive places. Jack's my friend. He looks after me. Why should anyone have to look after you? Sometimes I drink too much. Not often, but sometimes. The rest of the time, I don't drink at all. I'm not an alcoholic in case that's what you're kicking around in that candy little brain of yours. I do not have a drinking problem. It's just that once I take a drink, I can't stop. Oh, I see. <laughs> what are you smiling at? Well, you've just handed me an accurate description of an alcoholic. One for whom a single drink is too much and a hundred not enough. Well, that about sums it up, I guess. Well, go ahead, ask me. Ask you what? Why do you drink, Mr. Maitland? You who have everything, talent, even genius, success, acclaim, looks, charm. Do you have charm? Well, a certain amount. Don't I? Well, women seem to think so. That must be very gratifying. Not that I take advantage of it. I don't. Because I happen to have a very beautiful, very exceptional wife. You'll see when you meet her. Mrs. Maitland and I have already met. You have? Yes. She's the one who put up bail for you and brought you here. She's been here every day. Well? Well, what? Isn't she everything I said? And very clever, besides? Well, we've only talked, she and I, uh, half a dozen times, and mainly about you. Well, she could tell you a lot, if she wanted to. About why you drink too much? About lots of things. I'd rather you told me. I drink when I can't write, when my angel deserts me. When she's with me, I write. When she won't come near me, I don't. I drink. Your wife didn't give me that impression at all. What does my wife know about it? Well, you said when she's with you. My angel isn't my wife, doctor. Is that what you thought? Well, the way you talked about her, I'm sorry. My angel... Well, she's my angel. Created by God. Or don't you believe in God? Well, let's keep talking about what you believe. Well, angels are not necessarily created by God. Actually, I doubt that mine was. Some angels are beings elevated to their celestial status by their intelligence. With extraordinary intelligence. But they are composed of heavenly matter. There's no doubt about that. Mm. They mediate, at least mine does, between... Me and the God Force. I do believe in the God Force. Don't you? And my angel puts me in contact with the God Force. And I write. I write like an angel. You've probably heard that said of me. Or read it someplace. I don't do a lot of reading outside my own specialty. And what specialty is that, Spraytown? Psychiatry. Oh. Would you like to analyze me, Dr. Kramer? Would you be interested in being psychoanalyzed? Not if it would take away my genius. No, I don't think it would do that. Well, it's supposed to make you normal, adjusted, able to integrate with the group. Isn't that the idea? No, no. It's supposed to help you make the best possible use of whatever abilities you have. I have the ability to write. And I write. Like an angel. Sometimes. When my angel is with me. Other times you drink to excess. And you think you could find out why I do that? I think together we might be able to find out. I'll think about it. If, if it worked, 
I wouldn't need my angel anymore, hmm? Perhaps not. Or perhaps you'd give her another name. I'd like to be able to write whenever I felt like it. Write well, I mean. Would you like to have a typewriter sent up to your room? What good would a typewriter do till my angel comes back? Mm. (laughs) Hmm. Well, perhaps I should have one sent up anyway, just in case. If you want to. No. By the way. Yes? You said my wife had been to see me? Yes, every day. Today? She's downstairs right now. Would you like to see her? I think so. Well, I'll ask you to come up. Oh, uh, a doctor. Yes? Are you in love with my wife? Am I what? It's a simple question. Are you in love with Pauline? That's my wife's name, Pauline. Are you in love with her? I'll ask her to come up. He is, of course. But is Pauline in love with him? Genius penetrates to the essential truth of whatever it concerns itself with. Genius does not stop with description, but goes on to revelation. It paints or composes or puts into words truths that lesser mortals could never discover by themselves. Is our protagonist, Mr. Lawrence Maitland, a genius or no more than a talented writer? I'll be back shortly with Act Two. Mr. Lawrence Maitland, you may remember, discovered himself in a large, airy room not his own, which he rightly deduced to be one of many in a mental institution to which he had been brought after assaulting a stranger in a bar. Dr. Max Kramer, chief psychiatrist of the asylum, after a friendly chat with his new patient, was startled to be asked if he, the doctor, was in love with the patient's wife. Doctor. Mrs. Mason. How is Lawrence today? Better. Much better. Oh, I'm so glad. He can go home if he wants to. Really? Mm-hmm. Only I hope he doesn't want to. Why do you say that? Because I couldn't guarantee that what happened in Jack's bar wouldn't happen again. And perhaps again. But why did it happen? I mean, to, to hit a man who'd never done him any harm, a man he didn't even know... Uh, Mrs. Maitland, there are no easy answers. Oh, I know that. <laughs> everybody says I know that, but everybody goes on looking for easy answers. Yes, I, I, I'm i sure that's true, but still I... But still, you'd like an easy answer. <laughs> You're reading my mind, Doctor. <laughs> is your mind so different from other minds? No. But his is, Dr. Kramer. Lawrence has a mind that is... Well, it, it it's quite different. He... He knows things, things that other people don't know. Like what? Haven't you read his books? Well, I have meant to, but there's so much reading I must do, I <laughs> I haven't got around oh, to it. Oh, but you must. They're like, well, they're, they're like revealed truth. Like the best parts of the Bible, if I'm not being profane. Not to me, you're not. Well, I, I, I'd read all his books before I met him. All those that had been published up to that time. And, and then when I met him, I, I, I felt like a schoolgirl sitting at the feet of a, a master. Just to be near him was to be near the fount of all wisdom, all truth. How old are you, Mrs. Maitland? Why, I'm 37. How long have you and Mr. Maitland been married? Ten years. And do you still feel like a schoolgirl? Are you still sitting at the feet of the master? I... Well, yes, I do. I, I, I am. I don't think that's a very healthy way for a woman of 37 to feel. I think a woman of 37 should have formulated her own thoughts about wisdom and truth. Well, I never thought I... I, I never tried. I mean, I... I mean, I don't really know anything. You know a great deal. I don't know why you say that, really. I... Because everyone knows a great deal. I'm not not trying to flatter you. 
Everyone knows a great deal until he or she starts taking the word of someone else on faith. That's when the intelligence falters, when we start believing what's told us instead of what we feel to be true. But I think I see what you mean. Well, now, we were talking about your husband, weren't we? He can go home if he wants to. Does he want to? He seems somewhat interested in being psychoanalyzed. Really? We've never been interested before. Quite the contrary. Well, I can't say how serious he is about it now. But the incident in the bar, the fact that the man, Jones, I think his name is, is suing him for assault and battery, it puts a different light on things. Or it should. Of course, he has something the rest of us don't have. He has his angel. He told you about that? Oh, yes. It seems his angel has temporarily deserted him. Oh, it's Lawrence's way of talking. I don't think so. I think he believes he has an angel, a real angel. You and I, perhaps, would call it his ability to write. But if he wants to call it his angel... Well... <laughs> you know, at first I... I... I thought he meant you, Mrs. Maitland. Oh, for heaven's sakes. Why would you think that? I don't know. I I just did. Well, perhaps I'd better go up and see him now, if you say it's all right. Yes, yes. Quite all right. What did Pauline tell him about me? That I'm a rotten husband? A worse lover? She could have said anything, true or not true. Told him everything I've ever said, everything I've ever done. Would she do this? The very intimate things? Oh, not likely. Not Pauline. Not that she'd be trying to spare me. She'd be trying to spare herself. Pauline can't stand truth. Not the way I can. Pauline, may I come in? If you dare. Welcome to the crazy room. Oh, now, Lawrence. Oh, we don't say crazy anymore. We say disturbed, don't we? Neurotic? Dr. Kramer says you're much better. Oh, he does. Dr. Kramer says, does he? Well, he says that you can come home if you want to. Does Dr. Kramer say that? Yes. Any other little quotes from Dr. Kramer you'd like to give me while you're here? Lawrence, please. He's your doctor. And what's he to you? What? <laughs> the very same as he is to you. Your doctor. A very good doctor who's trying to help. That's all? Of course that's all. Are you in love with him, Pauline? With, with the doctor? With Dr. Kramer? Yes, with Dr. Kramer. Of course not. I already know that he's in love with you. But you don't know anything of the sort. But I can't tell if you're in love with him until I see you together. Then I'll know. Well, I can tell you right now. Yes, what? It's me, Jack Brody. What do you want, Jack? I got them for you. What? The doctor asked me whether to bring it up. What is it? Lawrence, ask him to come in. He's heavy. Can I come in? Okay, come in. Wait a ton. What? It's a typewriter. Where, where should I put it? Here, this, this bureau ought to hold it. Okay. Uh, the doctor said take it right out of his own office. It's his. There you are. Wasn't that nice of the doctor? Yeah. Um, I, I'm Mrs. Maitland. Oh, I, I'm, I'm Jack Brody, a friend of your husband's. A very good friend, I know. Yeah, well, you think maybe you, you think maybe you'll write something, Mr. Maitland? Well, it, it might be the best thing in the world for you, darling. You knock off a masterpiece, huh? Could happen. <laughs> oh, maybe we ought to leave the room, Mr. Brody. Yeah, yeah, maybe we ought to. Uh, nice to have met you, Mrs. Maitland. Well, I'm very glad to have met you, Mr. Brody. Yeah, unfortunate circumstances and all that. You, you coming to, Miss Maitland? I might as well. Now, Pauline, wait. Don't go. Well, all right, dear. Mrs. Spiel. You want me to read it now? Take it. As a rule, he never wants me to read anything until it's finished. It's finished. Take it. Lawrence! 
What's the matter, Mrs. Raven? You didn't... Well, you, you couldn't have written this, not you. You you couldn't have. I won't believe no, it. Let, let me see it. Don't tell it. I'm telling you see it. Well, you, you, you've oh. never written like this before. Never. We were standing right here. With this, this is... You, you wrote this stuff for your wife. This is gutter stuff. He couldn't have meant it. It's disgusting. It's... It's vile. I never read anything so repulsive. It's not like him. He's he's sick. He's worse than sick. He's rotten. He's decayed. No. He's ill. Whatever. Listen, Mr. Maitland. Let me tell you something. Don't you ever set your foot inside my bar again. You hear me? You understand what I'm saying? I don't want you in my place ever again. You don't mean that, Jack. I mean it. You show your face and I'll smash it in. You're my friend, Jack. No more. I was your friend, but no more now. You you stay away from me. Well, where am I supposed to go? You really want to know? Huh? I have to go someplace. I have to have some... Uh, now, Jack, Jack, uh, Jack, don't turn against me. Don't stop being my friend. I already stopped. Any man can write that rotten stuff and show it to his wife. Boy, and you call yourself a genius. Well, what am I supposed to do? Who's going to help me? There's only one, 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 just one, and she won't. Darling, I'm going to get Dr. Kramer. He'll know what to do. I'll be right back. Where's my angel? Where did she go? She left me, and now they're all leaving me. All against me. All hating me. Why do they hate me so much? Because I have genius and they haven't. But that's not my fault. I didn't ask to be the way I am. It's not my fault that everyone's against me. Pauline's gone. Jack's gone. Everyone's gone. I'm alone, all alone, and my angel, will I ever see her again? Now, who's that? May I come in? No, no one may come in. It's... Pauline. It's Dr. Kramer, Mr. Maitland. Pauline. Pauline, I want to explain to you about what I wrote on that piece of paper... Don't hate me for it. I don't want everyone to hate me. Anyway, not you, Pauline. Let me explain why I did what I did. Go on, tell me. You see, as soon as I saw the typewriter, I thought my angel was sitting on the carriage return lever. You know, the way she used to. You remember, Pauline? I don't think I do. Tell me. Well, maybe you never saw her, but certainly I've told you often enough. Oh, really, Pauline? I'm not Pauline, Mr. Maitland. Don't you know that? Pauline, it looked like my angel. At least I thought it did, and... Oh, I was so relieved. She's come back to me, and now I can go on living. And so, you see, I started to type. You and Jack were still in the room. I remember that, but it, it didn't bother me. You were making small talk. It, it didn't matter. My angel and I were working together, you see? You, you do see, don't you, Pauline? Go on. And then you screamed at me. Did I? Oh, you know you did. And then Jack grabbed the paper out of your hand, and then he, he told me never to go near his place again. That's what I couldn't believe, Pauline, that Jack would turn against me. Now, you, you know what I've decided, Pauline? Tell me. That wasn't my angel who came and sat on the return lever. No. Oh, no. Now, listen, Pauline, that was the fallen angel. An angel who has fallen out of favor with God. An angel who has allied himself with Satan. Fallen angels are destructive, Pauline. Completely destructive. And this one means to destroy me. How is one to tell a true angel 
from one who has fallen from grace. Since both have miraculous powers, how is one to accept the ministrations of the one and resist the machinations of the other? Speaking for myself, I find myself modestly grateful that I have never been visited by any angel whatsoever of either kind. I'll be back shortly with Act Three. When we left Lawrence Maitland, he was explaining to Dr. Max Kramer, psychiatrist, why he had written a page of obscene prose and handed it to his shocked and horrified wife. While his explanation may have sounded bizarre to the psychiatrist's ear, no less bizarre was Maitland's conviction that he was talking not to his doctor, but to his wife. However, several days had now passed. Yes, Jan. Oh. Um, well, ask Mr. Jones to step into my office, please. Mr. Jones. Now, why would he... Uh, <coughs> Mr. Jones? Dr. Kramer? Yes, yes. Come in, please. Thank you. Uh, have a chair. Thank you. My girl said you wanted to see me about Mr. Lawrence Maitland. Well, they told me at the police station he was here. Yes. Yes, he is. Um, how is he? Ooh, coming along. I'm glad of that. He's such a very great writer. <laughs> so I'm told by many people, including Mr. Maitland himself. But you didn't come here to discuss Mr. Maitland's literary gifts? No, no, of course not. I I came to tell you about that unfortunate, the most unfortunate incident at Jack's bar. Has he told you why he took a swing at me? No, he hasn't. Possibly he doesn't know. Possibly. But I know. Yes? He thought I was about to make a homosexual advance. Oh. Definitely. And I wasn't. Oh. Although I am a homosexual. Yes, I see. You see, I work as a bank teller, but most of my spare time is spent reading and sometimes writing uh, in a despairing sort of way. Why despairing? Well, because I don't think I'm really very good at it, and I don't suppose I ever will be. So when I saw Lawrence Maitland, the great Lawrence Maitland, sitting at the same bar at 11 o'clock in the morning, I thought, well, maybe if I could just talk to him for half an hour... I, 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 I don't know what I thought, what I expected. An encouragement, maybe, uh, maybe a pointer or two. I really don't know. But not, not what he thought I wanted. Well, was there anything else? Oh, yes, I, I wondered if I might see Mr. Maitland for just a minute or two. I have something rather important to tell him, but not what I just told you, no, something else. I see. Something that, well, might make him feel a little better. Well, in that case, I don't see why not. Oh, he's such a great man, Mr. Maitland. Such a very great writer. It seems such a pity. Such a pity, yes. Uh, Jane, is Mrs. Maitland here yet? Oh, she is? Well, ask her to come in, please. Such a pity... Oh, come in, Mrs. Maitland, come in. Thank you. How is Lawrence? Much better. Oh, good. May I see him? Uh, there's someone with him now. Oh? N- not Jack from the bar? No. I didn't think so. Mrs. Maitland, I think it's about time I gave you some kind of diagnosis of your husband's condition. A very tentative one, you understand, but, well, let's... Call it a, an educated guess, all right? All right. Your husband is paranoid, Mrs. Maitland. Not chronically so, only intermittently. Do you know what paranoid means, Mrs. Maitland? Suspicious, feeling persecuted. Correct. Paranoia is a mental disorder characterized by delusions of persecution and of one's own greatness. Do you follow me? I think so, only you sound so... So what? 
so severe. I, I'm not used to... Well, never mind. I, I don't mean to sound severe. It's all right. But, Dr. Kramer, Lawrence is a great man. That's not a delusion. No one knows with exactitude what a great man is. Well, what's to be done, Doctor? I can't... I can't just abandon well, him. Well, psychoanalysis might help. Would he do that, do you think? He might. Should I... Should I talk to him about it? It's better that I should. I wouldn't know what to say, really. Hmm. I'll talk to him as soon as his present visitor leaves. You never told me who his visitor is. I, I, I can't imagine who'd come to see him. Who'd even know that he's here? It's the man Jones. The man he tried to knock down in Jack's bar. Who is it? May I come in, Mr. Madeline? Who are you? I'm Jason Jones, Mr. Maitland. Who? Uh, from the other night. Uh, a couple of weeks ago. Jack's bar. I took a swing at you. Yes, you did. I must have been drunk. Uh, not so very. Well, sit down if you want to. Well, thank you. What can I do for you? I, I don't know exactly. Uh, teach me how to write? In one afternoon? I was only kidding. Not in a lifetime. As a matter of fact, I'm having a little trouble right now with my own writing. You see, my angel's gone away. Who? Who who's gone away? My angel. The one who sits on my typewriter. Oh. You want to write? Get yourself an angel. And how do I go about doing that? Lord knows. They come when they please. And they go when they please. Mine has gone. I, uh... I've dropped the charges against you for assault and battery. I, I'm not going to bring suit. Well, that's damn nice of you, Jones. Thank you. I don't think a man of your... of your greatness should be dragged into court. I quite agree. So, uh... Well, that's about all. I just wanted you to know. I... I, uh, I don't want to tire you. It's quite all right. Come back again sometime. Thank you. Mr. Maitland, if I might make a suggestion? Yes, go right ahead. Don't be afraid of people like me. I mean, if we want to buy you a drink in a bar or talk to you, don't be afraid. Afraid? What's he talking about? Afraid of what? Afraid of somebody like him? People like him? Well, what's there to be afraid of? Now, who is it? Dr. Kramer. Oh, you. Come on in. You, uh, talk to Jones? Yeah. He's dropping charges against me. Very nice of him. I thought so. I thanked him. Next time, the man you hit may not be so obliging. Or so admiring. What next time? It may very well happen again. It never happened before? The disease hadn't progressed that far. What disease? Paranoia. A progressive disease. You mean it gets worse? Inevitably. Well, what do I do about it? Well, there are various things, but in your case, I believe I'd suggest psychoanalysis. We talked about that before. I think it might help you a great deal. Okay. When do we start? We? You and I. When do we start analyzing why I do the things I do? Um... Not you and I, Mr. Maitland. Why not? 
Well, the patient must feel sure that he likes the analyst. I mean by that that he has no immediate, no instinctive antagonisms toward the doctor. I have no antagonisms toward yes, you. Yes, but... So what's holding us up? I... I... I can't accept you as a patient. Why not? Because... Now, you've got to give me a reason. You can't just brush me off. Because I'm in love with your wife. Ah. Uh. I don't know how or, or when or why it happened, but it happened. I was right. I was right. When you asked me, did I love your wife, it was not true then. It came later. It was true then. I knew because... Because I am Lawrence Maitland, and I know these things. Now, Doctor... Doctor, I'd like to be alone for a while, if you don't mind. Of course. We'll talk more later. Perhaps we will. Perhaps. Goodbye, Doctor. Goodbye. If you need to talk to me, I... I don't think so. Well, in that case... What was that? What was what? I thought I heard something. Oh, did you hear her too? Her? My angel. She's back. She is? Can't you see her? She's sitting on the typewriter. I... Uh... I can't say that I, I, I do see her. Not really. No. I don't suppose you can. Be so good as to close the door behind you, Doctor. I really have to get to work. Tell me, John Matthias. Someone is supposed to have said to the man who came to be called St. John of the Cross, How do you write your wonderful canticles? To which the poet priest replied, Sometimes God helps me, and sometimes I do it by myself. If the true men of genius can give no more satisfactory answer than that, what in the name of heaven can you expect of me? I'll be back shortly. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams.